think the seniors are so cool and you're like an older boy's talking to me. You're a pervert. You're a pervert. You're a pervert and you're wrong. I'm more worried to have a son that's going to be perverted. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to have a perverted son. Don't put that in the air. I'm not. I'm going to teach him right, but he's going to do wrong. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a thing. How do you teach a man in this world to be good and a woman to not listen to men? Boys will be boys, they say. Oh, God. Fucking bullshit. Oh, my God, man. Boys will be boys. Try and tell me I'm not a feminist. My, I hate my son already. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to Plan Brion Cut. If you're listening to this, we know you like to have a good time. And you can do that with Pirate Water. This whole entire show is brought to you by Pirate Water. It's a 10% ABV malt beverage. Comes in four delicious flavors. We have Sex on the Beach, Miami Vice, Margarita, and Bahama Mama. Personal favorite, probably Bahama Mama. Like I said, it's 10% ABV. It's a tall boy can under $2, so it gets you messed up for a good a good price. If you haven't tried it yet, make sure to try it. Uh, you can go to drinkpiratewater.com to find a pirate water near you. And you can also order it on GoPuff. Follow us and tag us at Pirate Water so we can repost your stories. We love seeing you guys drink what we're drinking on. We love Pirate Water here. So like I said, if you haven't tried it yet, make sure to get your fucking little hands on some. Let's get into the episode. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Plan Brie Uncut. How are you today? Well, well, well. <laughs> I woke up and little baby Boston said, oh, I jump on your bed. I said, okay, I gotta go outside. So we went outside. Wait, can she jump into your bed? No, she she gets her, puts her paws up there. Mm-hmm. And she says, mama. And I say, <laughs> mama, let's go. And we run outside to go to the bathroom, go outside. She pees. Mm. Come back in. Where I'm like, all right, I gotta get ready. Put her on my bed because she likes to hang out on my bed. Very comfy for a dog. Diarrhea. Diarrhea. Diarrhea on the white bed. Mm. Looking like really like shit in the bed. And then I had to throw uh, my comforter away. Probably could have used the wash anyways. Yeah. Um, I, I ordered a new one, so I'm super pumped about that. That's good. You needed a change. Yeah, I'm excited. Your couch is coming today. My Guys, couch is coming Grace today. Grace has never had a couch. I've never bought anything for myself. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I've never had to decorate my own place because I've always just been like, yeah, the roommate stuff. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. Doesn't matter. Also... I realized growing up mm-hmm. in a family of six, six. fact checked, correct? That's six or seven. That's seven. I have six. Six. I think. I know, but I counted six and did seven fingers. <laughs> How'd you do that? I don't know. I'm fast. Family of six, right? Mm-hmm. And I, every every friggin' morning, every night, I'd be like, dude, who is like gripping this toothpaste? There's something wrong with them. Oh, they're angry brushers. Angry brushers. And like, you know, like when the tube is like this? Yeah. And, and, then when, so- have- and when someone's toothbrush is like, Flattened because they're brushing yeah, so aggressively. This one oh and it has tobacco in it. Uh, <laughs> so well, he's got to brush hard. It's a bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad has hit, hit the point of doing chewing tobacco so much that he just keeps it in the front of his mouth. Oh god, sorry, that was bad for a podcast. <laughs> but he just keeps it in like the front of his mouth where it's all it's gro- it's pretty gross. Dad, you got to quit that shit. Hey, my dad smokes a pack a day. Hey, you know, to each their own. Everyone has their vice, and they're exactly alike, but they don't get along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Where was I going with that? Oh, and all the roommates I've had, I'm like, damn, they've got the same fucking problem. They just, like, they've got aggression on the toothpaste tube. I'm going to be honest. You've only had one roommate. I've No, I've had a bunch. When? I had... I had oh, you y- mean in college? Like, yeah, in college, oh. and then you, and then... Um, I don't grip. I'm getting there. Okay. So now that I live alone, yeah. I realized... It's you. It's me. I don't even know I'm doing it. You're an, you're, you're an animal with the toothpaste? Apparently. Wow. I was, I, was, I was like. No, you know what that is? You trying to get your money's worth. And you know what? That's <laughs> what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my money's worth. One thing about Grace, she's going to get her money's worth. And it doesn't matter if I am, am like, like my ears are spewing out gold coins. I'm going to get my money's worth. I know, dude, because we know the value of a dollar. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude. I, I, that's a stupid story, but I just thought it was so funny that it was. It was it, you it's the kind whole time. of like the way I live my life. Like it's everybody else's problem. It's yeah. not me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that way though. Hey, but at least you weren't doing anything bad. You were just getting your money's worth. I was just getting my money's worth, man. Dude, you know what's crazy? I was uh Snapchat memories are a scary place. They're terrifying. Um, but my Snapchat memory yesterday was me um on my fucking Snapchat saying, Oh my god, I can't afford to eat dinner. And I was putting my Venmo on my Snapchat story. Shit. Baby, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. Sad. That's crazy. That four years ago couldn't afford to eat. God, how far she's came. Even <laughs> even Robin, like I couldn't. I was asking college students for money. Shit. And you know who sent me money? And I remember who. You're always gonna remember. Um, that fucking 
guy that was way too old and had sex with me when I was a kid. Mm. Mm -hmm. You ever want to talk about that? (laughs) That was bad. In a setting that's not cameras, maybe like Um, a doctor that has a license. (laughs) I don't do that stuff. I know, but it would be probably good to get off your chest. I know. Well, there was a really bad guy. (laughs) There was a really bad guy when I was a really young girl. He was so handsome. Hey, he was so handsome. He was so handsome. I fell for the trap. (laughs) A handsome man gets the young girl. Oh my God. It's a tale of America. And he was a the best fibber in the game. Oh my God, lying. He told us that he created those wristbands at Taylor Swift concerts that light up. Literally lying. And if lying. he did, you wouldn't be living at your mom's house. And you wouldn't be driving a minivan. And I had <laughs> sex with you in your mom's house. And she was what? Um, Too young. I was too young. Too young. I was too young. Under man. the legal limit, I believe. I believe I was too young. <laughs> and I believe I woke up and said, I am too young. <laughs> you didn't feel like the man? No, I did. I know because it's like in, he when was you're a young person. So handsome. Yeah, he was so fucking handsome. dude. Guys, <laughs> he was so handsome. He's really handsome, and he was like in love with me, and that's wrong. Yeah, but it was bad. I woke up and I was like, oh my god, and then we did the deed again, and I said, dude, this is like my second time having sex. Literally, <laughs> last night was the basically the first, and then fucking, you're a man. No, I know. I was like, I'm the man. I put. He gave me his robe to wear. <laughs> I'm wearing his robe in his mom's house that I thought was his house. You probably think this is pretty damn cool. Until you find out that was wrong. Dude. And this is your mother's house. You always think it's cool when you're a kid and you're talking. Oh, that sounds so bad. But, but I can talk from experience. Yeah. But you always think it's cool when you're young and you're talking to an older guy until you're older and you realize how fucking insane it is. That's my biggest fear with daughters. Yeah. Dude, like imagine having a daughter and then your freshman daughter is talking to that rapist fucking pervert senior that's like, I love a 14 year old because I can just get them to do whatever I want. That's a crazy age gap. When you're a freshman, you think the seniors are so cool and you're like, an older boy's talking to me. You're a pervert. You're a pervert. You're a pervert and you're wrong. I'm more worried to have a son that's going to be perverted. Oh, God. (laughs) I'm going to have a perverted son. Don't put that in the air. I'm not. I'm going to teach him right, but he's going to do wrong. Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah, I know. That's a thing. How do you teach a man? In this world to be good and a woman to not listen to men. Boys will be boys, they say. Oh, God. Fucking bullshit. Oh, my God, man. Boys will be boys. Try and tell me I'm not a feminist. My, I hate my son already. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm going to hate my son. I'm going to hate my son. No, we're going to. I'm going to have three boys. Oh, dude, that's sick, though. And I'm going to accidentally adopt them. Oh, what? <laughs> no, it's going to be like a whole scenario where I feel like I have to take these kids in. Oh. Yeah, but these three rut housers. <laughs> Dude, yeah, they're going to be Rottweilers. <laughs> That's what I meant. Oh. oh, what did we say about dogs? Oh, it would be super funny if someone names their Chihuahua Great Dane. Mm-hmm. Or a Great Dane Chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> or like, um, yeah, th- I mean, there's different variations. Yeah. I mean, that's peak comedy. <laughs> 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 um, we thought that was really funny. We were overtired. Yeah, man. I love being overtired, though, because everything's so hilarious. Oh, I love a slap happy giggle. Oh, I know. It's like the best thing ever. That's like top three. Okay. Variations of hangovers. Mm-hmm. I got, I think I have four hangovers. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one, my most common is probably just going to be so tired, can't keep your eyes open, tired for the whole day, no matter how long you slept. Lots of food. Yeah, hangover. That's a food day. Uh, two would probably just be that crazy fucking headache. Your head's like, oh my God, rolling around water. I never get a headache. Oh my God, that's probably my worst one. <sighs> Three, fucking stomach, stand up, throwing up everywhere. Oh my God, need to go to the hospital. You went through this phase, and I think we've talked about it a thousand times, but you went through this phase. Remember, she is the hungover girl. That's why she works here. And that's why I have so many variations. Um, But you went through a phase, like every time you stood up when you were hungover. Projectile yak. vomit. Yeah. Projectile vomit. Yak. Projectile. Like like the exercise. Yeah, that's when I had a drinking problem. Four. Mm-hmm. Uh, slap I think happy. you drink less than. Sla- no, I would drink Tons oh, you of drink vodka. vodka. Yeah. I would drink a whole. I would drink a handle of vodka. Mm-hmm. But yeah. four hangover, best one, silly hangover, silly hangover, it's silly a, hangover, slap but happy. I, you can truly and honestly, if you wake up right away and you just start the giggles, you can you can get rid of one through three. If you wake, if up you're with someone when you're still drunk. Yeah. Well, no, I think it's a mindset too. Sometimes. Oh, mine's a physical barrier that I can't jump through. I can't jump these hurdles. <sighs> there's so many hurdles. You know, there's days where hangovers are. You know, you want to be in that mindset, mm-hmm. and there's just hurdles physically in front of you that you can't get over. Like a horse. Like a big <laughs> horse. Yeah. <laughs> like a great dame named Chihuahua. Mm-hmm. I can't jump it when my stomach is gonna explode. Yeah. That's when you drink yourself into oblivion, though. And then you're just like, you should maybe just stop. <laughs> Y'all want to drink ourselves into oblivion tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, because we, just, we used to just drink to black out. Yeah, I know. I now like to drink 
I try to think. I, I mean, like, I enjoy a good buzz, though. Yeah, man. no. But I don't know when to stop. I don't know when to stop. I never will. But that's okay. <laughs> I'm fine with that. That's just how everyone in my family is. And we were that's talking just about this last <laughs> night on FaceTime. It doesn't matter because we're going to be those people when we're older, when people are going to say, dude, those girls get potty. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what we're saying. We were saying, um, Bert Kreischer's right. Mm-hmm. Kreischer, I can never say his name right. Kreischer, Gotta I think. get it right. Bert Kreischer. I said that? Yeah, the first time. Then you doubled down. Oh. Trust your gut. That's my guy, Bert. Mm-hmm. So my guy, Bert, he what gives a name, that. Bert. Bert. <laughs> you can't be Bert and cool, but he's the exception. Yes, he is. Uh, but he he's given that that great speech. We've all seen it about how great drinking is. And it, that'll make me stop a sobriety stint and whatever. But I don't suggest that because if you if you're sober, like more power to you, that's really awesome. That's huge. And I and I salute you. Yeah, I wish. But what? <laughs> People are going to say those girls could party. Oh, yeah. No, dude. One thing about him, he's an alcoholic, but everyone says like he's the man. Mm-hmm. He can out drink anyone. He's a good time. We said we are. Uh, the, the machine. second coming dude no because <laughs> yesterday we come into work and everyone's talking about us in chicago and they were like you guys wh- what that i've never seen you two so drunk what they, they were telling us all these stories and we we're like what <laughs> are you talking about and then we would just look at each other and say we had a fun time it was a fun party but they were coming up to us like not like oh you guys were like really drunk they were like you guys were really drunk and you were like <laughs> so electric, electric. and it was kind of yeah. like that's kind of sick they're like you were all the way gone but you are a blast yeah i'm like are you just trying to toot my horn and make me not sad or I do know. you believe that we are the shit I know. <laughs> and then we were saying at least you know we're gonna have terrible hangovers and maybe do some stupid shit but when we're old mm-hmm. and not partying anymore we could be those guys where it's like dude <laughs> grace and brie they knew how to party yeah dude like when i pass they're gonna say Damn, she was fun. <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of tits in your face. Oh, d- yeah. I talked about we my, talked about your funeral. my funeral. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of tits in face. Where's that segue? Big cat. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I haven't so- seen the whole thing. <sighs> Can we watch it? Can we pull it up? Any chance? Okay. So to preface what we're about to watch, Big Cat, he works at our company mm-hmm. and he made a video about Taylor Swift. It's gotten... 30 million views on TikTok, something out of this fucking world insane. He's getting ripped to shreds. People are coming for Barstool again because we were talking about this on BFFs. At Barstool, if one person says something, it's grouped as the whole company backs them. Yeah, that stinks. Which sucks because like people say outlandish shit here. And I think honestly, everyone here has different opinions. So yeah. like when Big Cat says yeah, this. Yeah, of course we do. Yeah, but like <laughs> it's like crazy Dave was like, it's one of those only companies where one person says something and the whole company is grouped into it. Yeah. What else? What else? Is he, that Fox? Uh, yeah, I guess. But even they like debate and stuff. So yeah. we were talking about how just insane it was that Big Cat says this and then all of Barstool's getting torn down for it because Dave even was like, if there was a gunfight, I would have to shoot Big Cat in the face for this because <laughs> I'm team mommy Taylor. Yeah. Team mother. Mother. So um, this is Big Cat's clip that went uber viral and he is getting ripped to shreds along with all the employees at barstool for big cat's words let's get in to the clip you know what all right i'll say this if travis kelsey and taylor swift release a sex video i'll consummate this (laughs) this uh relationship and be like fine you guys can have sex you can should have stopped there girlfriend i don't buy it until i see some dick in vagina do you think (laughs) is she i'm saying that right now get worse who's giggling I haven't seen her drinking at these games. I saw her drinking some she juice. P and V, otherwise drinking, it's not really drinking some juice. Should we demand it? I want to see. I want to see P and V. I want to see insertion. I see P P and A. Double P and A. Or P and V or P and M. Yeah, P&M, I'll take P and M. Good. I'll take P. I'll even take uh, H on on P. Hand. Yeah, I'll take a hand yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see a hand penis. job. That's fine. Give us a Lauren Bobbitt. Is that her name? Bo- Bobbert. Bobert. 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 Yeah. Give us a Lauren Bobert, and I will be like, you know what? These two lovebirds, they can't they can't get their hands off each other. It's fine. Until that happens, I think it's it's fake, and I think it's for clicks. And I think Taylor Swift is using the NFL to try to make her star bigger. I would see some TF. I would see some TF. I would see TF. <laughs> Max. Okay, so yeah. that's the clip. And Big Cat's whole thing is – Since it started, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift is that uh, she's like using the NFL or it was like it's NFL versus Taylor Swift. And he's like NFL side because he's sports. But this he the whole time he's talking, I can just picture him going. Yeah, I like 
Uh, dude, this was just... It's like ready to ex- explode and combust. I think when like men talk, they don't realize the gravity of it. Like, I've seen it. I've seen a lot of... I haven't seen this yet until just now. I saw a lot of people replying to it, like women. Mm-hmm. Like women. They, women. Women replying to it and saying... Uh, Oh, they're saying this is just the perfect example that white men don't need a podcast. <laughs> this is like like stereotypical like white dudes like pigs ass like it's <laughs> it's to a T. Yeah, especially talking about uh, women. Yeah, I get I get that he was trying to make a joke where it should have stopped. Was I don't believe they have sex, so it's not real. Like, yeah. in, I, I don't know, still bad joke, I wouldn't laugh at it, but should have fucking stopped there. Yeah. Men make terrible jokes, okay? So it should have stopped there. The fact that it just went on and on and on, I don't know, it's just a gross visual, like, I don't know. You don't need to see that. You don't, in, he said he demanded he it. He demanded it. He needs it. to see it. Personally, see, for listen, his own accord. I love Big Cat. He's always been kind to us. He's a great guy. He's the reason I got my job, so I feel poorly but that's a poor, terrible take that's Certain, a poor uh, take terrible take obviously and uh this is not the ideas of everyone at barstool yeah no can we get that can we get that clipped yeah uh, th- we have different opinions on things yeah we are barstool not the sports all <laughs> yeah. right mm-hmm. we're just barstool um but like yeah everyone's responding to him don't you have a daughter and he was like Yes, and hopefully she has a sense of humor and understands when I'm clearly making a joke. Which is, see, I, he, he's getting defensive because he's like, it's just a joke. And I know the gravity of like when you're making a joke and you don't mean to offend anyone and then you're too uh, stubborn to apologize. Been there, done that. Mm-hmm. A situation like this, you have to take a step back and realize what you said was gross. Yeah. That's it. It's like you have to take yourself out of the situation because I've totally been there where you make a poor joke and you just stand by it because you're like, I didn't mean it that way. Mm-hmm. It's like, of course you didn't mean it that way and you didn't mean harm, but people took it that way. So you did offend people. Yeah. That's I, the gravity of it. I did that on Tuesday. What'd you do? I made it. I, I, I was so NyQuiled up that I was, I guess I made a joke that um, I'm not laughing that Courtney Kardashian was once a whale and that's why she's afraid of whales. Chloe. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I hated that joke. Not cool. Wasn't funny. No, it wasn't. wasn't low hanging fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Too easy. That sounded like Big Cat himself. <laughs> exactly. So, it's, oh, shit. That means. Incredible. That's pretty funny. But uh, <laughs> we yeah. gotta we got to remember to put that in there. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, that's that is just a terrible clip to get 30 million views of Big Cat because I don't think he is that guy. I think no. he made a bad joke and I think he should apologize for it. I don't know if he will. We've all been there where it's like, you don't. You know, you don't want to double down or no. You know, so I don't know. I know it's it's tough in the sense of uh, when you when you're doing comedy, but that's that. I mean, it wasn't like wasn't like a well written stand up joke. Yeah, like if it's a well written stand up joke, I think anything's fair. I agree. But it's off the cusp. Mm, that's off the top of your head. You're not really thinking. It's something you could probably apologize for. Yeah, yeah. Um. So that was that. But it's going fucking bananas on TikTok, mm. and I hate when this happens because. It brings back the whole narrative of everything we've been like working towards changing about Barstool, the misogynistic shit, the racist shit, like all the all the skeletons get Mm -hmm. fucking brought out of the closet. And it's like, guys, we uh, more than that. We change. uh, Not we. I'm saying like the company itself. And um, yeah, Dave wouldn't stand. Dave doesn't stand for that. So, Mm. you know, it's kind of and I know this might. All right. I'm not turning into a Swifty. Okay. Okay. I'm kind of turning into a Swifty. Oh, wow. Everything is changing. Dude, okay. I don't listen to her music, though, so I guess I can't be a Swifty, but, dude, she's all over my feet, and I'm just like, all right, I see all these videos of her dancing like a fucking idiot. She's so bad at dancing. She's still dancing everywhere she goes. She's like, I don't give a fuck. She's well, she getting is loaded. Of course she's no, a happy go lucky gal. No, from the beginning, like, my whole For You page, because I was diving into the Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift shit, because I watch every video about mm-hmm. it, because I'm like, what the fuck? And now I'm, like, invested. This is the first thing I've ever been invested in on the internet. I don't know why. We all know what's going on. They're dating. Yeah. I don't know. It's just what everyone's talking about. And we're talking about it on BFF, so I think my phone hears me. But every clip I'm seeing, all these old clips of her in the studio, she's just, like, such a dork. And, like, <laughs> now she's, like, dating this, like, super hot fucking, like, Taylor Swift is a dork. She has been dating mega celebrities for years. Yeah, but fucking losers. John Mayer's not a loser. He's a bad guy. Yeah. 
Yeah. But she's <laughs> like, now she's like, okay, this is how Kelly Keegs put it. And uh, see, I don't know like a lot about Taylor Swift, but I'm, tr- I'm trying to get on so the train. So watch yourself. No, I know. I'm saying I'm kind of like a Swifty <laughs> just on listen to her music. I'm like team Taylor in this just because, I don't know, she seems like a, she's for the girls. She's truly for the girls. And dude, so many guys have fucked her over. And I'm just like, all right, fucking snaps, Taylor. All these guys <laughs> that she's dude, all these guys that she's dated have never like shown her off or like they've tried to keep their relationship private. And yeah. she's like seeming like she's always wanted to be someone to be shown off because you're Taylor Swift. So yeah. now like Travis Kelsey is like talking that's about a good her. Point. Yeah. So this is what my take on it is like now she's with this guy that's like showing her off. Who cares if he's like, I don't know, a corny fucking football player. Two corn balls. Exactly. Two corn balls. <laughs> and she's like, uh, I mean, it goes back to she wears short shirts. I wear t-shirts. <laughs> t-shirt, Captain and I'm on the bleachers. Now she's dating the star and uh, like the star football player. That's pretty sick. And it's like, oh my God, I was such a fucking loser. Now I'm dating <laughs> this guy. And she is. She's a corn bag. Like, yeah. dude, she dresses like one. Dude, she she has a stylist. Did you know? Because uh, I wouldn't have known. And this sounds awful, but like a lot of the times when like the paparazzi pictures when she's going out to dinner. By the way, how do you guys find out where she's going out to dinner? It's insane. They wait outside. They of wait her outside. House. But how do you find out where? Like what? Her just Diana shit, bro. Like it's crazy. It's very cool in a sense. But <laughs> leave her the hell alone, please. Dude, she loves it. I know, but like that stinky ass. I know, but dude, they're she... outside of her apartment, which has a garage. In New York City. She's the biggest billionaire in the I world. I know, but it's just like, what? You got a garage of your own personal accord? I know. I can fit all your besties' car- suburbans in it? I Come know, on dude. Now. She's, I mean, she's tay But she's popping off um, on the streets with the, the paparazzi, and she's... She is Taylor Swift. She gives sparkles, she gives glamour, she gives fashion. She but, does not give fashion. In my head. But then I see paparazzi pics, and I'm like, baby girl. Well, that's the thing, dude. She... But she has a she stylist. is the common woman, but she is Taylor Swift. Like she's like, I'm just fucking a little nerd. I can't mm-hmm. dance. I'm not that. I don't have all this crazy she can dance sex in her appeal. Concerts. We've seen her in concerts. She do she do be too two stepping. She does. She dances how I would dance on a stage. She. And I'm rocking with it, dude. And I think that's why people love her. Because she's just like, I'm fucking just regular. But at the same time, I'm so above everyone in the fucking world. She dresses like a regular. She dresses 2016 circa bad, which is like <laughs> cool because like, she can. She dresses like someone who was scrolling Tumblr and was like, I think I could pull this off. Yes. And then unfortunately got the wrong pieces together. Yeah, but like it She dresses works. like me. <laughs> it works, dude. Because she just like, it's like, yeah, this is me. And it's like, she still looks good because she has a face of an angel. Yeah. And then it's just like all of these famous people gravitate towards her because she just seems like, dude, I don't She's know. She's a good time. She seems like a good Personally, time. Personally, I do not fuck with the music. I tried, but I am. I get it. Yeah. And before I didn't, mm-hmm. okay? And now I'm like, I'm coming around. Well, what did we say when she started dating Travis? I don't know what it, why it took till this this marriage. I think <laughs> it's because this is the most I've ever seen seen anything of her. Yeah, that's true. I've never seen anything. I've just seen people. She was in hiding for a little I've bit. I've seen her fans who, I've, I've, what we saw was the people at the concerts, you know, and it's just a dork fest. It's a dork fest. Which but is it, epic. It's, it's like It's a Comic sense Con. of community that we don't have. We don't have it. Mm-mm. I'll have it at SZA, though. Dude, I'm so pumped for that. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. I'm pretty sick, though. I will say, uh, last thing on the Taylor Swift thing is, um, it's crazy how much everyone's talking about them. Also, she's totally doing the halftime show. Are you kidding me? She wouldn't. She It was already, wouldn't. dude, it was already, it's Usher. Oh. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why? No, he has bangers. If you think about it, bangers. Like this, like you can move your, you can move like Tay Swizzle with to it. Damn it. Dude, so many bangers. And I don't think she's... I think she's too good. Oh, sure. I know. That's a... That's stinky. Dude, there was rumors that it was Miley Cyrus and Harry Styles together, which is like someone just made a headline. It wasn't someone real at all. Someone just wanted to get everyone jazzed up. Yeah, me personally. I have beat my meat to dude, that shit. Dude, imagine Miley Cyrus and like we're going to the Super Bowl. I know. So, dude, which is fucking sick. I know. I, I don't care what team's playing. I sound like such a girl and people are going to hate that I have the seat oh, at the actually, concert. we can... I mean, um, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl! <laughs> no, dude, we can... This is where we can lay out our lines about the Eagles. Okay. Okay, so last, we'll insert a clip. We have to. We have to. Because I already know everyone's going to come for me that just because Zach's an Eagles Birds fan that I'm going to fucking, I'm just bandwagon. 
insert video, last uh, Super Bowl, it was Chiefs versus Eagles. Put a hundred dollars. Whoa! I put a hundred dollars on the Eagles. I but to I put me, like it was everything. Two thousand, and uh, I lost it all. I lost it all. But dude, and that's we the, that's the wage gap. Yes. So we were saying in the last um, last Super Bowl after when we came home, we were like. Pats fans and Birds fans, the Birds fans are the closest to Pats fans where they're just insane, annihilated, Bills Mafia too, but just fucking absolutely drunk messes that ride or die for their team. So that's why we were Birds fans riding for them in the last Super Bowl. Yeah, because we had to pick a team. And I, I'm not going to go Kansas City. What do they got? Mahomes. And, D- D- and Kelsey. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I just, well, we said exactly what you said, but mm-hmm. in sports aside, Boston and Philly, very similar. Yeah. Same vibe. Same vibe. Same vibe. We fuck with Philly. We love Philly. Philly's great. So we, and I know we shouldn't because that's like a rivalry, but dude, we're women. Okay. So also <laughs> I have been um, vocally. Use your oh, voice. Use shit, your voice. bitch. Get it together. Use that I have voice. been very vocal about, I need to find a new football team mm-hmm. and I'm sorry, I'm jumping ship, but the Pats ain't doing it for me dude the Pats we like to be on the winning teams we're bandwagon fans we don't watch games until it's the Super Bowl or until we're going to a game or until we're going to a fun bar drinking fun beers and watching a fun game Mm -hmm. so obviously we want to root for a team that's going to win Birds going to probably win could possibly go to the Super Bowl we are going to be at the Super Bowl hopefully if the Birds are there we'll have a team to root for we got to start rooting for them now so I was on the fence when the season started and and mind you I've watched one game I've watched one game, one Pats game. Mm-hmm. But uh, I went this... to a Pats game. Oh, you did? I did. They lost. Dude, they were playing the birds. Oh, dude. But I was rooting for the Pats. <laughs> yeah. And then you don't switched up. I'm a fucking bitch. But dude, at the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're a bitch. Thanks, man. You're my best friend. Uh, that's my best friend. But at the beginning of the season, I was I was like, dude, I'm either going to go Bills. I should have put it in writing mm-hmm. because now it just like seems like Oprah I'm a fibber. Contract? Yeah. Yeah. You owe me money. Nope. Yeah, you fucking do. I don't. You uh, owe me money. I don't owe you shit. You owe me two hundred. It, it's a matter of public opinion. Until she gets arrested, I don't owe you shit. You owe me two hundred and sixty dollars. I we signed a contract crazy that, I, that, <laughs> that we did two hundred and sixty dollars. Two hundred and sixty dollars. That's something the, like that, dude. I gotta get. We gotta find the picture of that. I know. We got a contract that says if Oprah ever becomes a bad guy, which is just like I'm losing every time because of course you. Oprah's a bad guy. Like I'm the only one paying in that scenario because. If she's never found to be a bad guy, you just never have to pay. No, there was a deadline. Oh, there was we a deadline. It. it was last year. Oh. Oh, me and my money. She didn't get arrested. No, she didn't. But dude, so many people are sitting in jail that are innocent. That's not <laughs> <laughs> That's not the kicker of if you're a bad man. guy or not. That's And that's a topic. That's a topic. What was I saying? You got to, you wanted to put something. At the beginning, of the, beginning of the season, I was like, dude, I'm going either Philly or I'm going uh, Bill's Mafia because- I can get behind someone who can pregame and tailgate like a motherfucker. Break a table, bust it with your elbow and your hip. That's Bill's Mafia. Unfortunately, they're not doing so well. So, bandwagon to Philly. Mm-hmm. Is that what they're called? The birds. The eagles. The eagles. The birds. <laughs> the birds. The but birds. Dude, fly, eagles, fly. Oh, dude, you should see this video of us. We're going, fly. Dude, it was, we got the first, we, <laughs> Philly, <laughs> got the first touchdown in the Super Bowl, remember? And um, we're, we're all betting with all the boys. In our hometown, and we were all only two. On Chiefs, there's yeah. only three. Actually, there's three of us. There's mm-hmm. me, you, and one of our guy friends. And everybody else bet uh, the Chiefs. Good for them. But uh, when they first got the touchdown, we we're, were running around the house going, fly, Eagles, fly! Getting into everyone's face. <laughs> and they're so mad because like they care about football and they know it. And they've been like rooting for them all year. And then it's just us two bitches that don't know shit. Yeah. We're like, Eagles are like kind of Boston. So fly, <laughs> birds, fly. In their faces. And they were like, dude, you could see their fists clenching. Like they were actually, I was like, oh, you're going to hit a woman. Yeah. And yeah. They, they, you know, they're betting their paychecks, man. Yeah. It's, it's. Gambling, hey, so gambling's no joke. I, so are you? I, no, At the time? I knew better off. <laughs> I knew better off. Yeah, I did a crisp one hundo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crisp. Keep it a buck. <laughs> Keep uh, it a buck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shit, my bitch is my hobby. I'd be going dumb and I'm feeling euphoric. Gra. Thank God. Okay, <laughs> Ice Spice. Hopefully, she shows up at the SZA concert. Why would she? I don't know. Why wouldn't she? Wait, didn't they do a collaboration? Yeah. Yeah. I know. They. Her pop up says I had a pop up and Free she came out in New York think, yeah. and brought says out. I mean, Dude, I, see I gotta spicy. stay on top of things. I don't know how people figure these things out. I know, man. I have no sense of time. Yeah, no, you really don't. I don't even have a head. Dude, I, I used to be the one saying like, you know, like last week and they'd be like, yeah, last year. I'm like, ah, 
you've been saying, you know, like yesterday, I'm like, you mean six months ago? I can't even keep shit together, dude, man. Dude, we were talking about Vegas. You're like, yeah, like last week. I'm like, dude, Vegas was fucking May. Dude, my life is moving fast and I can't even figure anything out. Slow down. I can't. I'm living on the edge. Okay, that's kind of cool. I know. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fuck with Bon Jovi? Uh, well, Millie Bobby Brown is dated to his son. <laughs> She is dated to she his son. She isn't dated to his son. Mm-hmm. And I love Millie. I, really do. I pretty much met Millie Bobby Brown and I should have sh- sh- said to Bob Bon Jovi, I met Bon Jovi. Oh, yeah, that's right. Shook his hand, said, hello, sir. What well, can you explain? I think I did. Did you? I don't know. I met oh, yeah, Bon Jovi. Yeah, you but did. Um, you know what I should have said to him? Pass it on to your son's indebted wife. fiance <laughs> wife that I and my co-partner oh, yeah. are so incredibly sorry for being mad at her for being too confident as a pretty young woman. We, dude, imagine <laughs> you just sat him down like, listen, we had some confidence issues with ourselves so we projected and it just goes on and on and on. He's like, yo, can I watch the bird game? Yeah, <laughs> dude, and fucking, what if he was just like, who's Millie Bobby Brown? <laughs> you think he got dementia? Uh, no, he's still rocking out. Got a great head of hair. Really? I look at a lot of old guys and I'm like, "Did you get a hair transplant?" Mm. I wonder, because like you have to lose your hair as you get older as a you guy. You don't have to, but women don't really. Women don't really. I mean, they well, do. I know it, it, it gets thinner and stuff, but men just really lose it. I don't understand. What? I've never understood what? why majority of women cut their hair short when they get older. Maybe because it does fall out. Or because they have to take care. Dude, hair is such a hassle and they have so many kids that they want to care about. Yeah. And you got the grandkids and they start pulling your hair. You're just like, oh, chop it off. Because moms always cut their hair short once they're having babies. That was a big 90s thing. My auntie Val did it. and short hair. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't. I think it looked hot. I mean, they had it going on. Yeah. But I, I, they all collectively did it. It was like, oh, I'm pregnant. Oh, I have a pair of overalls on now. Where'd my hair go? <laughs> I think it's pretty. Yeah. Well, that, those are the trends back then. Yeah. Well, and now everyone's wearing baggy jeans. Look at us. Pretty, me. Oh pretty my trendy. God. Trendy. Uh, trandy. <laughs> trandy. Pretty candy. I'm looking pretty trandy right now. Uh, this is all I got clean. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's right. I think you look gorgeous. Oh my god. Are you business casual? Um, I don't know what this is. This oh. is like a like a squirt. Oh, I thought your trousers on. Work out on. I can't see your knees. No, no trousers. Um, we were talking about getting our scars removed. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. Well, actually, say your piece about because why it came up. Okay, so I'm I have these. Okay, I went on the tart trip. Remember, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I fell off of a golf cart, and I fell down a mountain, and I was wearing a bikini, and I was covered in blood. Raggedy Ann. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I stood up, and I said. Wow, that's a deep cut. Ouch. And I have all of these scars on the side of my leg. And I showed you last night on FaceTime. Yeah. They, I look like... It, Can we add a picture? Yeah, I'll throw a picture in. But the scars now, they look like bruises. And mm-hmm. I look dirty. I look like, uh, uh, you know, I've been doing dirty things in a sewer. Mm. You know, so like when I wear a bathing suit, I look like... Oh, I look like I have rough sex all the Mm. time. Like they look like handprint marks on my side. And I don't want to look like a hooker all the time. Sometimes I want to look like a hooker. Sometimes Mm. I'm like hooker energy. But you're allowed to look however you feel. Exactly. Constantly being a hooker energy. I don't want it. So I'm going to get. And it's not rough sex. No, it's uh, I fell off a mountain. Imagine all that all the time. Uh, I'd like that. But yeah. I don't want everyone to know that about me. Yeah, no, no, that's what I mean. Just exactly. like every every that's day you're waking up. Private. That's private. That's, that's private. That's <laughs> that's sex is between two people. God or and a how woman. many you want. Mm-hmm. But under God's roof. <laughs> under God's roof. God's <laughs> only God can judge me. My <laughs> sister has angel wings tattooed on her back that say only God can judge me. I love that. I love her. I need that. I need her <laughs> in this room right now. <laughs> it's fibula. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but anyways, I'm going to after this episode get laser to get them gone. Very to, cool that you could do that. I know. I don't know if it's gonna work because they're like kind of like superficial scars, whatever. I mean, that's like a metaphor for life, man. Like scars are just superficial. But we were saying mm. I said, you know what they're gonna say. The doctor's gonna say when you walk in. I said, yeah, I say you're gonna get under, you're gonna get under the, the on that table. The doctor's gonna look you in your eyes and they're gonna say. Your scars are your story. Are you sure you want to do this? Because <laughs> scars are your story. They are. I have so many other scars that I'm keeping, but these ones, it's a story I don't want to remember. Yeah. I you was know, a blacked out mess and I just didn't want to remember it. And that stinks to look down and be like, oh. All the time. I'm like, oh, I got more bruises. How'd that happen? No, it's just a scar forever. It's crazy. It's scarred like bruising. I know. It's weird. I'm like a, ch- I'm like a cherry tomato. Yeah. Well, this cherry tomato has had squish her whole life. Yeah. But so this is squish. Hero. 
I'm a hero. We'll insert um, a picture. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so Squish um, is a thing on my knee mm -hmm. um, that I got from rollerblading with my sister downhill when she was an infant. I hit her in a carriage. She's an infant. Seriously, so very little. Like a baby. Like, uh, like as one would say, an infant. it could even talk. It, it couldn't even talk. <laughs> and I, uh, She still can't. She, eh, she's working on I it. I love her. All right, guys, quick commercial break for Straight Talk, which is kind of a baller name for like a, a wireless company. So a new a new Straight Talk wireless offering is available starting 10 5. So where you can get a Walmart Plus membership included on select Straight Talk wireless plans for free. So only Straight Talk wireless gives you unlimited data, talk and text, plus a Walmart Plus membership included on select plans for free. So some of the perks of Walmart Plus through select Straight Talk wireless plans are free delivery from WM stores, free shipping, no order minimum, Paramount Plus membership, and member prices on fuel. So that's gas savings. That's kind of insane. You can get so much if you join with Straight Talk. And like I said you get the Walmart Plus membership, which has a bunch of perks. So make sure to check out Straight Talk Wireless. It's available now at Walmart and Walmart.com. Let's get back to the episode. She's the best. <laughs> uh, but she was in a carriage she's going downhill. I'm wearing rollerblades. And I said, oh, shit, we're all in trouble uh -huh. because I lost my footing because I'm not very athletic. Everyone's good not for me for getting out there, you know. <laughs> I like that about you. <laughs> and uh, keep in mind, a car was coming. Just keep in mind, I want them to keep this in mind. Yeah, keep it. Her driveway is a roller coaster drop. Oh, it absolutely. It is literally downhill incline. Grace, like we said, mm -hmm. you know, picture Grace on her rollerblades mm -hmm. going down this hill with a baby stroller carriage. Yeah, no. That is too much to juggle. Yeah. yeah. With an infant. Yeah. So I'm going down uh, the incline hill all the way down, mm -hmm. and car's coming. And I'm like, oh, we're all going to die. But I'm a hero. I know. So I skirted the baby carriage, caught the baby. Literally, like, she came. I think she, like, fell in the air. Maybe you are athletic. I Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, when it comes to saving lives, I'm a hero. You're and a firefighter. athleticism comes through. You're a firefighter. You're a fucking uh, volunteer firefighter. That's exactly what I am. I know. A lot of people don't get to talk about that because <laughs> I try to keep it humbly quiet. Well, speak your truth, hero. Well, so my, my daughter, um, she was flying in the air and I caught her, mm -hmm. but not without some some rocks and pebbles in my knees. Mm, it was bad. It was really bad. It was bleeding forever. I should have went to the doctor. Like like always, should have just went to the doctor. Mm. But um, there's still some rocks in there and I tried to get it removed when I was a child, oh. but they said that's cosmetic surgery. We can't do that. Oh. And my mom said, mm, tough. That's damn it. That's a lot of money. It's not that bad. Yeah. It's, I think it makes you you. And like you said, it's your hero story. It's kind of awful. Everyone has a hero story. When I wear skirts and dresses, it's Squish is going to be, Squish is going to be there. You know what I think maybe you could do? What? If you, if, but like you wanted to be shown. I would, I would love to get rid of it. One day when I hit big on the Eagles, I'm going to get rid of it. Um, I think you could put pimple patches on it. Those. You're a goof. And then, because they're <laughs> invisible. No, I'm saying when you don't want it to be shown. It's all, it's like um, raised, it's a raised squish. It's a big problem, pretty much is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's a big problem. Remember, <laughs> remember we were at Cousin's house and I fell on my knee. I'm always falling. She falls so hard. I fell on my knee and I go, oh, Megan, <laughs> you know what you just did to me? Look at it. <laughs> and I pretended that it was a new scar. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's an impractical jokester. I'm an improv genius. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I go, dude, look what you did. And I show her Squish. And mm -hmm. she's like, dude, what is that? I'm like, that's oh, Squish. Mm -hmm. It's named. <laughs> and that's when Squish was named. You mind if I vape? Dude, seriously, they're out of their minds. <laughs> I'm going to vape it regardless. OK, that's a word. Um, I, I seriously still think that's a word. Do you have any hot takes? I kind of wrote some down. Uh, yeah, I didn't come prep for that. I do have a hot take, actually. It's I'll not really hear. a hot take. It's just like a um, delusional observation. OK, so when we finished our live show in Chicago, there, I had all my I took all my bracelets off to look classy. I remember. And class but, act right there. <laughs> but do you remember when I had it said yuck foo? Yeah. I gave that to Fibula because he liked it. Mm -hmm. I think bad luck. that was my bad luck. And I think I gave him my bad luck. Oh, God. Because I've had that on for not even kidding two years. Oh, my God. It's really crazy. If you look back, I've had it on for two years. She that likes night, what she likes. That night, I'm going to get my money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> it was free. It's beads. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, delicious honeys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, that night he had some really bad luck, and it, it seems to be carrying over for him, unfortunately. I'm going to chuck his bad luck up to drinking a little bit too much. That too, that too. Um, he also texted me after the podcast came out, mm -hmm. 
And let me see what he said. He texted. He's been texting me saying, "I have to reread your messages, saying everything's okay uh, <laughs> once a day, so that I don't have a panic attack." <laughs> um, yesterday, the pod today gave me peace. Can I send you guys something to your address? <laughs> also, if you're still, oh, I'm gonna be in a uh, his comedy show, New York Comedy Week. Let's go. Because he feels so bad, he kicked someone out of my <laughs> out of their spot and gave it to me. I gotta come up with a set, brother. Easy. Money. It's not that easy. <laughs> you're easy money, dude. You got know. it. You can do anything. You're a hero. You're a volunteer firefighter. That's so true. I know. So remember who you are when you look in the mirror. Hot takes. Mm, hot takes. So your hot take is just you have bad luck. <laughs> and I gave it to Fipster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel because I feel good. Yeah. I don't think Except you're... for being wicked sick. I know, but it's over. It's seeming like you're back. I'm literally back. I'm addicted to NyQuil. Oh, that's a bad problem that we could get you addicted to codeine next. No, no, no. I don't want that's to. That's going down the path of no return. Oh, I know it is. But I've, it's only two nights. But like, I was already feeling good last night and I still took it. But I'm going to bed at 1130. I know. And I'm waking you... up at 930 and I feel great. I don't know. No, uh, you don't get that like hangover, you know, from like a You're melatonin like or something or like a sleeping pill or something. It's Awesome. It's pretty epic. I'm getting nine hours of sleep. Oh, uh, you're lucky bitch. It's like, I don't have a dog. I know you're so lucky. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dude, I like, yeah, see? In what are you days. saying? What are you saying? You're lucky. I'm what? Lucky. Thank you. I've always said you're the luck of the draw. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you're the one that says oh, I have such bad luck, which you know, you do. I always hated people who's like, oh, I got bad luck, and you chalk it up to bad luck. But over time you start to realize you have shit luck sometimes. Some people have shit luck. Yeah. I'm pretty shit luck. Yeah. I think it's something about being Irish. Yeah. Which is like a, it's a, uh, it's ironic because like, uh, isn't a leprechaun yeah, supposed to be gold, a lucky yeah. pot of gold? Yeah. The fucking Irish were Every actually Irish really person having a hard time. It's so unlucky. My family, their last name is McDonough and they're called the McDonough Mushes because everything dude once they put their name on something it goes sour yeah, yeah. something always goes bad but i'm all i'm also like and same with you i'm like you guys are just a little discombobulated yeah. in itself so i'm like sometimes things leading up to it could have been prevented and maybe the luck would have been there yeah yeah Ita- i hate italians yeah I, me too <laughs> I have no, I have, I have no uh, way of See, that's the thing. Like the Italians <laughs> are always just ahead of their shit and they got the good luck because they prepare. And then the Irish are like, oh, you guys got it all. So fuck you. We're just the Irish and we're angry. How many Is of you guys are, really, are really upset about what she just said? It's oh. kind of fucked up what she's saying. I wonder it? if we have more Irish fans or Italian. Italian. You know how big we are in Jersey? Dude. <laughs> I know, but I always say I hate the Irish. I'm a, I'm a fucking, I'm a mutt. I'm half Irish, half Italian. You can't say you hate the Irish. If you've got one sitting right next to you. I know. And I don't say, I actually I never say I hate you've the never Irish. Said that. But I am Irish. Yeah. I'm fair skinned. Mm. Okay. Remember remember, I tried to say that um, you weren't white, you were Italian, and people were like, that is so fucked up. Like, mm-hmm. Dude, it's a fucking joke. It's a long rooted joke from like the In America. Internet. Yeah. It's like a joke. Yeah, it's a big joke. <sighs> oh, who, who do we sound like? Big cat. <laughs> no, no. We're staying to our roots and what we can speak on. Mm-hmm. Seriously. I know. I believe it's you. It's a literal joke when I say that you're not white. You're my hero. You're my god. <laughs> Tell me about your hot takes. I'm so sorry. I got oh, distracted. Dude, no. I love when we go off the rails, man. It's like fun. It's like we're like taking a detour in life. Yeah, I feel like adrenaline. This room is just like heaven to me. I love checkers. <laughs> I know. I can't believe it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I have one hot take and this stems from... Uh, and it gets me so fucking mad. Oh okay. God. On the internet. When someone on the internet says something terrible to you, horrible things, and you come back and you say horrible things back, or not even horrible things, you just like, um, they, state you, the obvious. You give back what they give you. You mm-hmm. give the same energy, you match the energy. Mm-hmm. And people are like, this is fighting fire with fire. You know, you're never going to be better. You should turn your cheek. I don't believe in this. You shouldn't fight fire with fire. I don't believe that if someone is terrible to you and okay, there's instances where, of course, you don't stoop down to people's level. But if someone is a terrible person, they deserve the same energy back. I don't understand why if someone is a shit ass motherfucker, little worm that you should just bow down and be like, well, that's them. And I'm just going to be so sweet. What the fuck? How do you get anywhere in this life if you don't return reciprocate energy? That is what life is about, reciprocating energy. These are morals. These are morals yes. that people have. People have different morals. Like everyone has different takes up our stool. Yes. People have different morals. Yes. There's like some people, like that's what that's what you taught as a kid. You don't have to you don't have to stick by that. Yeah. You, you, you just like that goes back to dude, like this whole bad versus good thing. Like that is just a social construct made up. Also, I don't believe in an eye for an eye. Okay. I don't believe in like revenge per se, but I believe in like if someone 
is terrible, you can reciprocate the energy and you can give it right back to them. Like yeah. you should not let people walk all over you. I've never understood that because then you're a doormat. So I believe I'm fighting fire with fire and I have a fucking volunteer firefighter right here who could put it out. I'll put it out anytime. I'll put you out for real. Yeah, right but dude, you, don't you agree? If table. someone's a dick to you, you can be a dick back. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 my mind's only going to physical. <laughs> I know this is about the internet. Oh, but like uh, if not s- even the internet. Just like, and like, I don't believe in like, uh, like curb stomping people and shooting them in the head. Well, no, I'm, I'm thinking if like the thing you, our parents taught us, if someone's picking on you on the schoolyard, beat them up, you beat them up. Yeah. And that's, that's how I like to live. Dude, Except I always got beat up. <laughs> dude, I, I agree fully though. Like my parent, my dad always taught me, dude, if you, you don't have to, you treat people how they treat you. Yeah. That was my, my dad taught me two things. Learn something new. Treat people how they treat you. Learn something and I new think, is cool. Learn something. I know. Uh, like every day one. I would say, learn something new today. I would say, okay, come, come home, tell them something I learned new. And he'd say, treat people how they treat you. Mm-hmm. Not, not. So it's like, not what the fuck? treat people the way you want to be treated. Treat people the way they treat you. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my big, that's, I think that's why I am who I am. Cause it's like, if someone treats me good, I treat them good. Someone mm-hmm. treat me bad. Pfft, suck my little bitch ass asshole. Suck her little bitch ass asshole. Uh huh. <laughs> like what the fuck? Treat people how they treat you. I think that's how the world should be. Yeah. I mean, th- that's just like, that differs from person to person. Exactly. I think, I think it really gets, on, I've learned over the years that it really gets under people's skin if you just don't interact interact or mm-hmm. give it any any uh anything yeah i'm it's talking like, more so people in real life yeah because like i think i agree like even when i responded to the troll face girl on tiktok i was like i don't want to she's but back huh? i know but i was just like you're so fucking annoying and i just wanted people to understand how much of a bad person she was it yeah. wasn't more so to like interact with her because i didn't even watch her videos that she responded about me because i don't care because nothing she says matters but I'm talking in real life. Yeah. Like reciprocate energy. Yeah. Like if somebody, somebody's being a, a dick to you, I used to, I used to try and just like, I'm like, dude, one day they're going to like me. And I keep, I keep trying to be nice. And it's like, well, it's not getting you anywhere. Yeah. It's like, you don't I need think, that person if they're being a dick. Yeah. You don't need bad people in your life. It's yeah. like, dude, oh my God. I don't know. It's so crazy. Also, another hot take. If you have, so if you're best friends with everyone, you know, when people look at someone and they're like, oh, they're friends with everyone. They're great. If you have so many best friends, red flag, I think. Yeah, dude. I best friend is a term sacred to my heart and I will use it for one person. She's sitting right next to me. And your best dog. friend. Yeah. Well, my dog is my best friend, too. In the animal it's category. He was cute. In the you're adorable in the in the animal category. Yeah. All right, fine. In the animal fine. category, I have three best friends, Mango, Ollie and fucking Boston. OK, okay. in the person human category i have one best friend her name's grace o'malley if you're running around saying you have so many oh that's my best friend yeah no we're best friends that's my best friend no it's not no it's you not. can't have so many best friends you can't would they say that you're their best friend i don't know yeah it, it's only if it's um reciprocated reciprocated that's a good word that i was trying to find yeah okay <laughs> let's get it <laughs> let's get it let's get it but dude if you're running around being like yeah we're best friends that's my best friend red flag i don't think that you should have more than Fucking like five. If you have a best friend group, we have a best friend group. There's mm-hmm. five of us. Yeah. We've considered ourselves all best friends yes. growing up. I think that's cool. But if you have 20 best friends. Dude, everyone cannot be your best friend. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy. You can't have that many best friends. Maybe I'm bitter, but and I because I only have one. Well, I was thinking about it actually last night uh, on my, on my uh, walk home. We've had friend groups like come and go, whatever. Of course. And that's life. Mm-hmm. And I was like kind of bumming that we don't have like a solid friend group right now. But we're so much better for it because we have just each other. We know we have each other forever. Yeah. It's like you could have a thousand friends throughout life, but like come and go friends. If you like, if you have someone who's got you, got you, like if you have someone who's got you, it doesn't really matter. Dude, that's what I'm saying. So we, and I think this is where the best friend thing kind of like irks me when people call each other best friends when they're not. It's like, we've been in friend groups where that friend group, like we'd be introdu- introducted, it, inducted into friend groups inducted. and they would be like, yeah, we're all best friends. They wouldn't even know shit about each other and they would like call each other best friends. They would only hang out at parties and stuff. And it made me sad. I feel like best friend is a sacred thing yeah. that you should hold to a high tier because I think friendship is the most important thing in the world. So th- those are also people who find a best friend in someone they date, I think. Mm, and like yeah. that person knows everything about them but they're 
Friend group does not. Yeah. I think friends have a billion of them. Friends. Yeah. Best friends. That is a word that you should only use when you mean it. Yes, yeah, seriously. Okay. I um like if I heard you calling someone else your best friend. Death. I would have to hold a fucking meeting. Dude, if I, I heard you calling someone else your best friend, mm-hmm. that is a stab in my back, in my chest, in my ass, in my face. I've been trying to find another best friend. What the fuck? It's impossible. That's crazy. Whoa, <laughs> back it up. Why are you trying to find another best friend? I'm trying to find friends, honestly. Friends. You're trying to find... No, okay. <laughs> Actually, I don't think you're my best friend. I don't think you're my best that friend. That came out wrong. Why are you trying to find another best friend? I'm trying to find other people to hang out with. Why? Because you're gone sometimes. Yeah, but you can't find another best friend. No, First I'm not of all, trying to find another best friend. You're never going to find another best friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can't ever say that again. No, I didn't. Actually, maybe you're just my friend. Because I would never have said, said that about you. Just trying to find another best friend. Hey, Boston, you just went up on the totem pole. You're in human level best friends now. Because you're a cunt. <laughs> That's what you are. C-U-N-T. Cunt right there. Trying to find another best friend. Okay, I've been gone for a couple weeks. I'm in love. You should cut this. Why? I think it's funny. <laughs> uh, I, I slipped up. I know. But is that what you mean? That's not what I mean. Okay. So did you find another friend? I can't. Are you okay? I'm having a hard time. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, I leave a lot. So Grace is sad and she wants to find other friends, but we found out that it's impossible to find other friends. Like I have friends. Yeah, of I course. Definitely have friends. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, there's, there's no, not even that I wanted to replace you. There is no replacing you. Well, yeah, but no, I know what you mean. Like when, cause when I do things without you, I'm like, it would be more fun if Grace was here. Yes. And then we were talking about how like when we just do things together, it's more fun because you have that person. Yes. And when I'm gone, Grace is like, I need to find someone that could match the energy. And the, the energy is not there. You can't, you can't, um, you can't find another human being who is exactly who you're looking for. Yeah, I know. Which is tough though, because I envy people that have major friend groups in the city of New York. I know. Like a bunch of girlfriends. I know. Where do you find these girls? But also, we were also talking about it. We're kind of like, not in a quirky, like we're weird way. Like we're just not the girls that go out, look and talk about boys. And like, I feel like a lot of the girls in New York that we've come in contact with are just get drunk, get fucked talk about boys i know (laughs) and we have problems with that because like we said a relationship with a man is the only one under the roof with god (laughs) sex is important i think that's another time i slipped up (laughs) (laughs) i don't i don't believe that sex is with god (laughs) (laughs) no well that was the only god can judge me my sister's angel wing tattoo absolutely yeah but um no i don't know whenever we've tried to relate to other girls we just haven't been able to find those relationships and i think it's because of where we grew up and how we grew up. And like, we were like kind of weird in high school. We didn't do the boy thing. We didn't date. Yeah. We didn't do, we were like, our families were weird about sex and all of that. So like yeah. we weren't, uh, I don't know, like we were kind of sheltered. Yeah. And all, I don't know. I think we're getting out of that. Yeah. Trying. But a lot of the girls we've come in contact with, are just so eccentric and talk about things that we're just like not comfortable talking about. Not comfortable. And also like things that like don't to personally matter. matter. Yeah. Like it's, so a, a lot of conversations I have with um, like new found friends, mm-hmm. girls, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll be like, Oh my God, who like, what's your dating life? Like, yeah. and I'm like I've got nothing. Yeah. Tell me about yours. And they're blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I'm like, really? I know. I get it's like, really? I get that being a topic to like talk about, of course, cause that's life or yeah. relationships. But I mean, it's off the bat most of the time. And I, I'm like, now I got nothing. I know. Like, if you look at our friendship, I think maybe 2% of our time is socked about guys. Yeah. Like, we, you, like, I tell you about who I'm dating and stuff. And then that's that. Yeah. I don't know. Like, we don't talk about, like, if we need advice, we'll talk about that shit. But yeah. I think in a lot of, like you just said, like, female relationships, it's based off of guys, which I don't think is, maybe that's a hot take. Girls care too much about guys. I think that. That's my hot take. I think a lot of women like base their relationships off of fucking fucking and talking about guys. And I'm like, don't you want to build a level of like deepness to a relationship? Yeah. Like feel a, surface level. It's uh, yeah. It becomes surface level. It's like uh, but a, a lot of like like what I said, like a lot of friend groups find their best friend in a per in somebody that they date yeah. i think so i i think they're all just like 
they're all together in a herd mm-hmm. until they don't find a mate. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's yeah. really what they're looking for. That's human. Overall. That's human that's evolution. Just, that's human connection. Yeah. But I think fucking, I don't know. I think a lot of people, maybe t- like guys, not just girls, but I think a lot of people put themselves in boxes or like they limit themselves when all they want to do is talk about guys. Like, dude, I've just had so many, like so many of my college friends. It was mm-hmm. just all we would talk about is boys. All we would talk about is like the lacrosse guys, the football guys, who we didn't, who we hooking up with, who we're going to talk to at the bar. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. That should be a subcategory yeah, not the main of what events. we're doing. Like, of course, that's important. And I yeah. want to talk about that too, yes. but it shouldn't be the only and thing you all. care about. Like going out, sh- the sole purpose of going out shouldn't be to just like, I don't know, find a dude. I, uh, but we're in the minority there, honestly. I know, it's but because I our, no, our it's like, like, it's not five cool. best friends from growing up, like we were never like that. And we had the one friend who was like going out and that was like her game plan. And we were like, <laughs> dude, it's just, it's fun to watch. Yeah. And we, like, I don't, and it always uh, just ends bad. I don't know. I think it's just cause like you can see where it's going and yeah. it's like you get hurt and I don't know, maybe it's a barrier or it's like, just like a, take a step back, realize maybe that's not the right thing to do. Our mission is always to go out and have a fun night. Have a good time. You end up with a dude, you end up with a dude. Yeah. But I just, I don't think anyone's sole mission, girl and guy, guys do it too. Their guys sole mission is worse. to fuck. Of course. But that's, you can't even, that's just I men. Like, they're always going to be like that. They're like simpletons in the sense of we go out, to we go girl. fuck, we come home do again <laughs> i know like i don't know it's just so much more fun to be like let's go out and have a fun night yeah you end up with a hot dude you end up with a hot dude yeah. but the soul mission i don't know it's oh, me personally shouldn't be soul mission i don't like that I, I don't i don't think that's like yeah i don't think that should be a mission mm-hmm. i don't and, think we should be missionaries in that sense yeah i think we should be fucking let them come to you what did kendall jenner fucking yeah, say yeah i've been waiting for that though that's like that's the whole other thing you can't just wait for them to come to you because you're just sitting there like when will you come <laughs> to me? I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, I paid for a hinge. Oh, let's go. It's better, though, that way, isn't it? That's what everyone says. You're supposed to pay for it, so it's better. It's expensive. How much is it? It's like $35 a month. Really? It's like ridiculous. That's like Hulu No Ads plus HBO Max. Yeah, you're right, Brianna. That's too much money. That's a good way of saying hey, it. Hey, but are you paying for the love of your life? I guess. That's a lifetime long love? Dorks. Are they? I'm only getting dorked up. Hey, maybe a dork is a good guy, though. Uh-uh. And I'm reading. I'm my whole thing about is about the profiles is like what they're saying. I don't care. Like I really oh, don't yeah, care about the course. pictures. Yeah. And if what they're saying is goofy, it's like it's a double. It's mm. like didn't. Uh, Sometimes it's hard to come across like attractive as a person online. <laughs> Like, yeah, there's a words. disconnect. Like, I think it's like hard to maybe half these people in real life when they say the things they're trying to type, it would come out better. Um, I just went and saw our premiere of uh, this web series that's coming out. It's called Club Rat. This mm-hmm. girl Ava on TikTok made it. Mm-hmm. And a really cool part of it that I liked was um, there's a segment where she's on Hinge and mm-hmm. she's like she's talking back and forth with these guys. Mm-hmm. But like in the show, she's talking back and forth. But the guy is sitting right there with her. It's like how you imagine you're talking to the guy is yeah. like how he's saying it. But like, do you understand what I'm saying? I guess. I think so. So they're messaging like yeah. in real life, they're messaging, but she's imagining the person Him right next there to her sitting right next yeah. to her talking to her. And I was like, oh, I've never seen that before. Yeah, that's cool. But that was pretty cool. Did it change the way she was texting? Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because she pictured like someone say, they're like, hey, how are you? He's like, hey, what's up? And she's, he's like sitting right there and she's like, so what are you doing? And he's like. Can I see a picture? Uh, <laughs> and he's like yeah. right there. Oh, uh, okay. And it's like, ooh. Texting is weird. Texting's weird. I know. I don't I, really fuck I can't with it. Text. I can't talk in real life. I can't. I just can't. No, you can. Um, you can. It, it's just awkward. I come across awkward. Uh, me too, but I think that's just like who you are. Mm. I'm not saying you, like as a person. It's just like that's who you are. Yeah. I, I I've realized I'm awkward and I'm like, yeah, that's just me. Yeah. I can't you can't really change it. Mm-mm. Why? And also, I don't know. What if you you don't always want to be the loudest person in the room? Unfortunately for me, sometimes I am. Yeah, but you just I don't think you are. Thank you. When you're drunk and wasted, that's a fun Dude, time. I'm so loud when I'm wasted. I, know I can hear myself. If somebody's recording a video of someone dancing on a tabletop from across the room, you can hear me go, I need another beer. The it's back. like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, get a life. No, you have to get, a, get her a beer. <laughs> Take the megaphone away from that loud mouth. <laughs> I like loud mouths, though. Um, I'm trying to see if I have any other hot takes that I wrote down. Um, 
Oh, I don't know if this is a hot, necessarily a hot take, but I saw a TikTok about it and I think it's really interesting. So you know how like the Emma Chamberlain-esque like influencer where I think you could put that Madeline girl who is on Unwell now, like the depressed girl where it's like an aesthetic. Yeah. Quick commercial break for Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is a fast, easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Listen, I'm scrolling the app right now. They got the Foo Fighters. They got SZA. The whole reason we're going to SZA is because of Game Time. We got John Mayer. Olivia Rodrigo? Olivia, Olivia Rodrigo's coming to town. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PLANBREE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PLANBREE for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's get back to the show. It's kind of detrimental in a way where it's like all like they show their dirty, messy rooms. They show that they're always like in bed being sad where it's like it's a double edged sword where it's like cool to like have that representation. But then young girls look at that and it's almost like they try to mirror it and they're like, oh, sad girl thing is like it's an aesthetic. And Mm. it's like, oh, I'm well, it doesn't matter. I'm just like Emma Chamberlain or I'm just like this person. And they don't realize that those girls are literally getting paid and it's a marketing standpoint where it's like this is their brand yeah. and they're getting paid to post a picture of their messy room you on the other hand are just like sitting in your depressive messy room and it's not really the same in any sense there's something to be said about being authentically yourself online yeah i mean like that's what i mean what we could double-edged sword really throw it back to us like just showing people how much we party and not showing the depressive side and yeah. it's like like that's not cool. It's like, yeah, party all the time. It's never going to get bad. Yeah. And we don't show the bad. Yeah. I mean, that's like something to be said there. But it is also kind of like you weren't in on Tumblr, mm-hmm. but Tumblr, like I was in on it and it was sad girl season every season. Yeah. It's and where it's I learned like, oh, hole. shit, I can cut myself to that's feel better. Saying. And like it, I didn't even know that was like a thing until it was presented to me. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do this to feel better. And then I was like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like perpetual. Sum- summing up, cutting yourself, saying it casually and then saying, this sucks. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, but dude, I mean, same. Would cut for fucking attention in <laughs> yeah. middle school because it was cool on Tumblr. <laughs> and then I'm just thinking like young girls looking at those girls, which is like, like I said, it's a double edged sword because it's really nice to see representation like that, yeah. of like how you're feeling on the Internet. But then it's like if you're not showing the good and it's like you're always sad. Yeah. Girls are like mimicking it and then you think it's cool and then you kind of just like put yourself in that and you're yeah. like, am I even sad or am I just following this fucking aesthetic? And then I was going to talk about it, too, where it's like you could say about anyone online, yeah. like us, we party so much and girls just like party. That's not good. Yeah. You know, so like we but that's why we have the podcast and we talk about the ups and the downs. Yeah. But and I don't think this is anything to bash on like Emma Chamberlain or the Madeline girl because yeah. it's like that's their brand and that they're just being themselves online. But and they, they have problems. Yeah, of it was, course, and- it was, we all do. But it's like I, I think it's just crazy that like young girls could look at anyone on the internet and just like want to be that person and take like forget to understand that we're marketing a brand yeah like we post so much partying because it worked for us and it gets us paid and it gets us jobs and like that's who we are and that's our brand is partying which is crazy (laughs) and like their brand is like being this relatable sad girl yeah so i i think people forget to realize it's a brand and like we're getting paid to do these things we're not showing all of it like they're they're in bed doing a brand deal being like i can't get out of bed today let's have some campbell's soup and campbell's is paying them very a lot of money very a lot of money yeah but for real and these girls are like oh dude i probably should just stay in bed all day yeah yeah that's what they're thinking well they do it and it's like okay yeah and then they could look at us and be like well they party seven times a week well yeah we're getting paid to do it and all we we don't have to wake up for a nine to five and like yeah (laughs) it's different it's different so i think it's just separating the reality from like fucking social media yeah which is like so hard to do because if if we weren't in this realm i was like emma chamberlain's biggest fan maybe i'd be like sitting in bed being like well she does it yeah you know yeah so i think it's just hard to separate the two and i think that's crazy when you really think about it I don't know why it's reminding me of, remember they had, there was this makeup trend where you, 
you added baggy like bags under your eyes for yeah. makeup mm-hmm. and like people wanted to look like that people wanted to look sick like sick and or just like um sad and depressed it's just yeah. like that's crazy crazy like, yeah hi guys today we're gonna do the sad look dude and it was because emma chamberlain has bags under her eyes and it would be like <laughs> we want to look like the sleepy emma chamberlain eyes yeah that's exactly what it was that's yeah. why it goes back to that yeah that's just wild like it's insane adding an insecurity onto your face because it's cool I know. It's wild. The internet is crazy and trends are crazy. And it's like, if enough people do it, you're brainwashed into thinking that it's cool and then you do it. And like, Mm. we've all been there. Like I've done it too. Like you fall for trends, which I don't think trends are a bad thing. I think that's the world and there's trends and shit and they recycle. But things like that are really insane. Like cutting shouldn't have been a trend. And it was from Tumblr. It was a trend. It literally was. Anorexia too. Like fucking uh, eating disorders were like, it was a thing on on tumblr like I learned how to fake bulimia yeah like it was a thing like what is That's it called? like body checking that Should was have been medicated years ago <laughs> yeah but like dude and i wonder if that if tumblr didn't exist if, the, if you would have ever even done those things i wouldn't have known about it yeah exactly yeah. it's so crazy it is wild like the internet is both it's said all the time it's so cliche but the internet is so good and so awful i know it's crazy it really is i'm like what the fuck is going on mm-hmm. man but no i saw a tiktok about that and i was like oh that's so interesting to think about like you forget to remember that they're getting paid to post their messy room yeah and like same with like the alex earls like where she posts like her crazy disgusting apartment and it's like relatable it's like well she is a millionaire yeah <laughs> And like somebody's gonna come and clean that up. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, don't on the you... other hand, if you let your apartment get so bad, you're gonna have to do it. No, you're gonna get cockroaches, ladies. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy to think about. I always, even when I see them, I'm like, oh, it's so relatable. Well, well, she's a millionaire, so maybe I should clean my apartment. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think only Alex Earl can show her messy apartment. I, if I showed you what the state of disarray of my apartment when I'm going through something, y- you're gonna call the fight apartment. Yeah, because that, that's a health hazard. Yeah, same. And I'm gonna show up and be like, dude, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> dude, I know. Dude, I saw this kind of reminded me of us, which is <laughs> bad. But um, uh, or like reminded me of us in our era. Remember when you wouldn't even let me come into your first apartment? Um, so there was this lady on TikTok. That was so rude of me too, because you were really going through it, and I said, you can come to my house. You can't come in my room. You can't come in my room. And I didn't have anything other than a, a kitchen and a room. <laughs> I stood in the kitchen. I said, you are my best friend, but this is my worst life. <laughs> oh, no. I think I still came in. Uh, you did. It you, was worst life you ever had. It was had. like, seriously? <laughs> I, I think I could add a picture now. No. You could have been on because hoarders. Because that would be contradictory. Yeah. But I'm saying it's bad. Yeah, yeah you're saying it's bad. Oh, we can decide later. You can post just edit. <laughs> picture it, how it bad was it was. really disgusting. I had a problem. Um, yeah. And but anyways, I saw this and, TikTok. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. And it was Victoria Paris's old room, which was so fun and lively beautiful. and cool and beautiful. I think we have to show a side by side. Grace's was a cave. Mine was ow. Sorry. That's when we were what was I? Was I going through a breakup? Yeah. Yeah, that's when we were you were a cocaine addict. Yeah. And I was um following along and staying up all night. Yeah. Yeah. And we were insane and partying yeah. every single night. It was uh, morals out the window, truly. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, you know, everyone has a crazy era in their life. Yeah. It was fun. I look, I look, we look back at it and we're like, that's a lot of fun. Never want to do it again. I couldn't look, the last year I couldn't look back at those times, but now I'm looking back and I'm like, nah, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun. But it's always when you look back at things, you're like, oh, that was so fun, but you forget all of the bad. Well, for the last year I said, that was Harold. That was bad. That was mm-hmm. awful. And then bad we looked times. at pictures. And then you look at pictures and like, yeah, we had a little fun. It was a little fun. And we had a, a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but I saw this video of this lady who like um, cleans up crime scenes or like super bad apartments or super bad oh, houses. Her, yeah. yeah. And she was like, we got this call and it's the worst smell I have ever smelled in my whole entire life. What and she job. was like, it wasn't a crime scene. So there was this lady who was a hoarder in her apartment and there was a sewage backup for six months in her apartment. But she hoarded so much that she was embarrassed to call anyone to come fix it. because They didn't want she didn't want people to see her apartment. And finally, it got so bad. There was like sewage on the like she was like stepping in like two feet of sewage that she was like, I have to fucking call, call someone. I'm just thinking Dude, about imagine it. Imagine just go like thinking about it. You're gagging. Imagine us being there. She said it was the worst smell she's ever smelled in 16 years of doing her job. And she's gone to places with dead bodies in them. Jesus so H. Christ. She went and I was thinking, dude, that's so funny. Cause like 
you wouldn't let me in your apartment. And like, imagine like you get something really bad in your apartment and you're like, fuck, I can't let anyone in here. I'm going to just have to let it sit. No, dude, that's when you start cleaning. Yeah, I know. That's when you get to cleaning. She finally was like, I got to call someone. Yeah. And I think she had to move out. Yeah, I think dude. the damage was uh, irreversible. I, I mean, honestly, I did the same thing. Yeah. I, I couldn't take that place anymore. I had to move out. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I yeah. moved out a month early. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you just got to move. You, did you, you move to my be- my couch? I did. Yeah, which was not much better. Yeah. All my um, stuff was in your living room. Yeah. On a, on a friggin' one of those makeshift Rack. coat racks. Yeah, that was bad. That was a bad time. That was, yeah. <sighs> I just let everyone move in with me. Yeah, you're really sweet for that. That's when I couldn't, that's when I was like, yeah, I can't be alone. Yeah. So everyone come to me. Please. Please. <laughs> and I would have let anyone, I'll let anyone move in with me whenever. <laughs> Truly, I don't care. Anyone can move in with me. Um, oh, don't say that. Um, no, you can, you can move in with me. Well, you have a place. Well, no, no, not me. Who's moving in with me? Anyone. Oh, well, if you need a place to crash, I'll usually not there. So you can have my place. <laughs> I'm getting a key. I mean it. I need to get a key <gasps> I made. I gotta make money off of that. Dude, you can make money off that <laughs> for sure. And here's her wardrobe. This is where she films most of her TikToks. The pink wall. You could get so many clothes from me. Take them all. I have too many. We're gonna get we're gonna go through it. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. oh my god. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, that was it for really all my hot takes. Do you want to do voicemails? Let's do voicemails. Yeah, you don't have any more, right? I, di- I didn't um, personally think of any hot takes. Basically, just the fact that I was um, cursed and now fibula's cursed. Mm, that's fine. <laughs> okay. We have some voicemails from you guys about advice. Okay, sorry. It, it only took me two minutes to collect myself. I do have a question. I do need advice. We're here to help. I can never enjoy time Mm. by myself. And I am by myself pretty fucking often. Bri, I know you're into reading. I've tried to pick that up. I don't know. It's just not really worked for me. I don't have the attention span for it. But how, how do I find how to enjoy time by myself? That's a fair question. What do you suggest? Okay, that's a great question. Okay, um, I think that's a really good question, and we both struggle with this. Do you want to start? Yeah, I've been. I mean, I've been spending a lot of time by myself. I'm trying to keep yourself occupied is a tricky thing. Uh, trying to find a hobby, like, because what you want to do is not sit alone and be miserable. You're trying to find a hobby. I I also picked up reading. It's here and there. I have a very short attention span. And I'm a bad reader, so it pisses me off. I've thrown a lot of books at my walls. Um, Reading's not for everyone. I have a temper tantrum, too. Um, (laughs) I have a temper tantrum quite often. Um, But, like, one, like, simple thing that you can do to to get your mind off of things is cook. I will say, if if you're cooking, if you're going to the supermarket... You're getting the groceries. That's 30 minutes of your time. Mm-hmm. And then you and then you go back and then you cook. That's another 30 to an hour. And then you have accomplished something. So which is cooking or you didn't accomplish it, but at least you took up some of your time and you tried. Yeah. Uh, cooking is one thing to like, like, oh, I'm going to cook a meal. That's three times a day sometimes. Yeah. And that's that's some time spent, I don't know, cooking. <laughs> yeah, I think finding a hobby. I don't know. I have I grew up an only child and my parents were at work all the time, so I was home alone all the time. So I've had to, I've always liked being alone because I didn't know anything else of being alone. But I think it's not a bad thing if you don't like to be alone. Some people just don't like to be alone, Yeah, which is like, that's your personality. You feed off of other people and like you need the energy of other people. But I think it is important to like be able to sit alone in a room with yourself and like not freak out because I think that is probably going to cause a lot of problems in your life if you can't sit alone with yourself and just be like content. Uh, Do it in increments. Like you don't have to spend a whole day by yourself. Maybe like do a fucking couple hours or something or like do uh, do like like shower time, self-care, self-care mm. time is really cool. And I don't know. I think if you can't be alone, that's like not necessarily a bad thing. That's a personality type. Yeah. But it, to your point of uh, sitting there being alone and not being able to be alone and your mind goes crazy. Yeah. That's that's like a mental disorder. Yeah. I'd say. And that's not something you can really help about yourself unless you go try and get help for that 
I, yeah. I'd say. I mean, because that's exactly me. I seriously, my thoughts are insane when I'm by myself. <sighs> Fucking nuts. So that's why uh, I started going to therapy. Therapy is something you can do to talk that out with someone. Um, I know not a lot of people are like in on therapy, but if you're not, you can also like, like journal what you're thinking. And sometimes when you get the thoughts on paper, it kind of makes you feel a little better. Yeah. Journaling is really cool. Um, finding a hobby takes a long time to find one that you like yeah. but doing that. And also if you're just bored by yourself, like you said, run errands, like do small things yeah. and like make it a task. And I, I think eventually you'll get comfortable with yourself. It's like kind of going to have to be a habit making it a thing. It's, you're going to have to like train yourself to do it. Yeah. And I think like humans, like are people like you humans like crave connection. So it's not, you're not weird if you can't spend time alone. And another thing that uh, I personally clearly don't uh, partake, but exercising people have found a lot of peace in exercising. And then you don't feel alone, but you are alone with your thoughts in a sense, because you're at a gym, you're with, a, you're around people, but you're like in your you're own on zone. your own personal journey there. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Next, next voicemail. Hey, big fan. Love Pam Bree. Love the both of you. Thanks, bro. Um, so, my birthday's on Monday, and I'm Happy birthday. 25, oh, yeah. and I don't know if you guys ever get like this, but I get severely depressed around my birthday, Yes. and I wanted to know if there's anything that you guys do to get out of that funk, because, um, like, I literally want to cry just every single day, and nothing's wrong, but just sad, so, love you guys. Love you, man. That's Love you. Uh, that's relatable. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had a birthday where I didn't cry except for last year. Yeah. It was, it's tough personality trait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's this like weird stigma, not stigma. It's just like this weird like social norm that getting older is like when fun dies down and when you get older, you can't, you're not young anymore. And if you're not youthful, then things are good. And the more you age, the worse life gets, which... I, I mean, when you're super young, like when you're in your early 20s, thinking about being 30 is terrifying. Mm. And as at least I've said it, we said it in a couple of podcasts ago, like every year has gotten better with age is like you get smarter, you learn experience. Like every year I feel smarter and I'm like, there's so much more to come and there's so much more life to live. And like, we're still like you just because you're a year difference doesn't mean like crazy things are going to change and mm. you can't have fun anymore. Like, I don't understand this thing with age. You lose like fun and yeah. you lose your personality and like you lose with age, you grow more and you become more into yourself. So I think like getting older is so fucking cool. I think, yeah, just like changing your mindset on, on getting older is it's a mindset thing. It's like, it, I mean, yeah, it's hard to really change how you're feeling, but if you can wrap your head around like, no, this is actually kind of awesome. Like, Think of how stupid you were when you were 21. Think of how stupid you were when you were yeah. 18. You're like, oh no, like I'm I'm growing. I feel pretty good. Yeah. I'm like you, you don't have your shit figured out because you never will. But like each year you you've got you've figured some things out and gotten gotten to be better. Also for your birthday, cool thing about your birthday is you you make that's the one time of the year you can call up your buddies and say, dude, this is what I love to do. This is what I would truly enjoyed to do it's about me let's let's get it going yeah and i think it's super normal like even we had a podcast episode right before i turned 24 i was like dude i'm so scared i don't want to turn 24 like just the thought of like aging is scary mm. just like getting older because you're like oh my god but it's that whole just like stigma around getting older there's not there shouldn't be any fear in it yeah and i think it's normal to be like oh i'm sad i'm getting older but if you change your mindset on this is actually a good thing not a bad thing you'll be okay yeah so. i also think it's a fun thing to do and this is just a me thing, but um, every every year that you turn, like every time you have a birthday, reflect on the previous year. Like mm -hmm. go through your old videos, your pictures, and just be like, oh, dude, that was a great year. And and if it wasn't, you're like, the next year is going to be. Yeah. And, and there's two outlooks set on it. goals, not goals, or just like things you want to accomplish or feel in the beginning of the year for this year. And then mm -hmm. you can look back at it the next year and be like, did I do this? If not, let's set it for the next year. Yeah. Which is cool. Because... um. The new year is your birthday and also New Year's Day. Yeah. If you think about it. Yeah. And uh, speaking of which, I have a letter that I wrote my senior year to my 25-year-old self. 
Did you find it? I have it. That's and sick. we're going to read it on my birthday. Sick. I can only imagine what it says. I have, it's taken everything in me not to read it. That's sick. And I, I wish I did that. I just remember thinking like 25. You think that you're going to be a lawyer by then? Dude, I literally thought I was, I was going to like solve global warming. No, that's not ever what I thought I was going to do. No, but like you think when you're 25, you're like in a suit somewhere. Yeah. Like <laughs> when I just, you're that, when you're 18. I thought I was going to be engaged at the very least. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Fucking wild. Do we have any more more voicemails? One more. I can't wait to read that letter. Hi, my name's Emily. I fucking love you guys. Fucking love you too. too. I've been having an issue lately where I'm drinking way too much, going out way too much. Like, I'm having such a good time that I don't want to stop, but I know I should stop. Like, I know I need to chill out, but I can't seem to get myself to do that. Like, do you have any advice on how to get out of that repetitive cycle where you just can't stop partying? Also, because when I get drunk, I do embarrassing things, and okay. I'm, like, mortified the next day. And any advice on anxiety, too? Like, all of that. I'm having big issues with this, and I need help. Thank you. I love you guys. I'm going to your live show. I'm so excited. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, okay. Snaps to you because you're self-aware. Mm. Usually when people are doing that, they don't know that they're partying too much so like this is more of like a a free will thing Mm -hmm. like you need to have willpower to stop because you know that you should the first step is to admit you have a problem exactly (laughs) dude and you are there being self-aware is huge because you're already like i said like the first step in um Mm. i think it's like important not to stop things like that cold turkey because then it feels like you're completely changing your life and then you're miserable and you wish that you hadn't stopped i think just like cut back on it if you it sounds like you're going out like what five nights a week four nights a week maybe be like okay i'll give myself two nights a week to have fun three nights a week maybe then keep cutting back slowly Mm -hmm. whereas it's not like a a a halt to stop immediately where you feel like oh my god what the fuck i can't do this i also found like you're in the routine of partying and if you can get yourself to have a different kind of routine, a more structured routine that doesn't fully involve, like you said, like cutting back and mm-hmm. stuff, like if you can get yourself to be occupied with other things besides it, but that's tricky. Like that's just a hard one yeah. to, to follow. But if you could create some kind of structure on the extra day you would be partying. I think you can slowly cut back. Yeah. Routine is important. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, The anxiety thing. Dude, I have anxiety so bad too, but it's, you have to remember you're feeling that mass amounts of anxiety because of the alcohol and the partying and the no sleep. And it's like, you have to remember it's times a million because you drank everything that you're thinking. You wouldn't be thinking if you didn't party so hard. Yeah. So it's like, okay, maybe I shouldn't party so hard or just realize that this isn't going to feel the same tomorrow or the next day also um with the anxiety like the more you hear things you did and the more you see that's the worst part is when you've seen it it. yeah i i've found and i'm i'm just a little different in the sense i always have to see it but like overexposure to exposure to yourself (laughs) like if to seeing yourself all the time it's just like you learn to just be like, ah, that is what it is. It, or it, it was will, a fun night. Or you'll watch it if you keep watching it and be like, okay, this is something I don't want to do again. Yeah. And you won't do it again. Yeah, that's true too. Um, but yeah, anxiety is just a bitch. And you just got to remember that it's not real. She's a cunt. <laughs> yeah, she's not my best friend. Uh, but that's it for voicemails. And I think that's it for the episode. I think that was a good episode. If you guys have any other like topics that you want us to talk about where we give you advice and shit, just let us know. Or just like hot takes that you guys have we could go off of those oh yeah i'd like like to to hear hear other people's hot takes and then we could see if we agree with them or not those are good yeah so uh happy thursday should we prank someone i think those have to be more premeditated we have to come up with those okay right yeah because it's hard to come up with them on the spot prank someone on tuesday Mm -hmm. um but yeah that was a good episode guys we love you and we'll talk to you on tuesday and I'm sorry about what I said about the best friend thing. I really never like, slipped up on my words. It's honestly, it's really it's okay. and honestly. Seriously. See you guys next week with my best friend, uh, Boston. Mm.